engineers. And then the engineers are hearing me straight. <laughs> That's why we're here to show even more engineering fails to some real mechanics, and we're gonna find out who's really to blame. First that? Mind my own business, and all of a sudden, this thing's on fire. Oh, hey, that's my nightmare, known bro. Known to be terrible, but not known to spontaneously oh. combust. Nice. All this was like melted plastic in here. What the? Fiat. Yeah, straight on. How'd that happen? And a fuse didn't pop. Mm. The routing of the wires seems to be quite badly thought out. You don't even know. How the hell did that happen? Why did we get a fire in the back of the car? You know what? Straight up, I have no f idea. <laughs> Well, everything that has any kind of lights or devices in the trunk or the hatch or anything mm -hmm. always has some kind of a harness that comes from the body. I've Similar. seen harnesses break like that before, oh, okay. for 100 percent sure. But things stop working, fuses blow. The fuse should have popped. Anything else should have popped. The relay, f the car could have popped. Besides <laughs> that, sh getting cooked up. So what if I told you this is actually a common issue with these cars, and it had a recall from the fuse box shorting out? That sounds like the best reason to ever have a recall I've ever heard. <laughs> the battery and the wiring on that car suck ass. They explode and the wires bind up like this and the fuses don't pop at all. They stay hot, run all the way through and then you see you have a barbecue. We're gonna give this clip a grain, but before we do, tell the people who you are, Sandro. My name is Sandro, I'm a mechanic. I've been doing that for like my whole life. You can find us at Miranda Shop and downtown LA, bring your junks. <laughs> My name is Joe Morgan. I'm an automotive instructor at RCC. And I've been racing and blowing up engines as long as I can remember. I think we know where this is going. Is it cursed engineering or a whining mechanic? It's engineering. You guys suck on that Yeah, one. for sure. Definitely cursed engineering. There's no way that a circuit should have been able to run wild like that. The fuse should have protected it. You heard it here, people. First, our next clip features an infamous safety feature devised by Mercedes-Benz engineers. But before we take a look, a quick word from our sponsor of today's video. When you're wrenching on cars, safety's a no-brainer, right? But what about staying safe online? Well, today's sponsor, NordVPN, is here to help. The internet can be kind of sketchy, especially when it comes to your private, sensitive information. We know what you're looking at. But with NordVPN, you're basically installing a digital roll cage to make your online browsing safe and secure. When I search for parts on the internet, I don't want to get bombarded with targeted ads or get a million ads for the part I literally just bought. That's where NordVPN comes in. It's more than a simple VPN. It's packed with fresh features like threat protection and mesh net. With threat protection, you'll be protected from malicious websites, malware, trackers, and intrusive ads. With MeshNet, you'll be safe to access remote devices, share files, play games online, and more. There's a lot to love about NordVPN, and right now, you can get a two-year plan at a huge discount, plus four additional months free when you go to nordvpn.com slash RMS. It's 100% risk-free thanks to NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. So don't wait. Visit nordvpn.com slash RMS and get online protection today. Thanks again to our sponsor. In this clip, a mechanic demonstrates what happens to modern Mercedes cars whenever a crash is detected. Let's take a look. If I hit start, nothing happens. Operate selector Hopefully, lever. Hopefully, if I remember, it's in special functions, teaching processes. There is. Enabling of engine, engine start, start after crash event. Inhibit engines from start is active. So what we need to do, it says F1 to start procedure. And I have done this before. Sometimes on the first go, it doesn't do it. Second go, let me just see if it does start. No. What are we looking at here? We're looking <laughs> at something that makes a lot of sense. A lot of cars do this. If you get in a crash, you really want to go over the car, especially if it's a bad crash. It popped all the airbags. You have mm. to go through and make sure that the fuel lines are all intact, that the car is safe to drive. They cut the fuel pump for a reason, because mm. you don't know when you hit, when you get in an accident, it, the airbag module doesn't know how bad you crashed the car. But it also takes away your options. You crashed, yeah. right? Let's stop it from catching on fire. Yeah. But if you're in the freeway, you gotta get off. You gotta get off. The first thing even cops tell you, hey. If you're in an accident, pull to the side. How the f are you gonna pull to the side? On the 110 freeway where it curbs, there was an accident there. He got hit, it was a Mercedes. Couldn't f move. Guess what came behind it? <gasps> no. Yeah, you get stuck and that's it. So it's like, it makes no sense. 
the feature is solid. Most cars do have that. You blow the airbags, the fuel pumps, the engine's gonna be disabled till you at least cycle the key or reset it, disconnect the battery or something, and you turn it back on. Would you say this is cursed engineering? Or would you say this is a whiny mechanic and a bunch of whiny people? I would say this is halfway between. Uh, this is a typical European car where it's a little bit overbuilt, more than what it needs to be, mm -hmm. which is, that's the problem. That's engineering. Pretty f***ed up. No car is worth your life. Get out of the car, get safe first, you know? Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. you can kind of ascertain what's going on. If you're in traffic, you know, you don't want to be sitting there cranking the key, trying to figure out how to get it started. You should just get to the side of the road, wait till, wait till your car gets towed off if it's, if it's disabled. I feel like they didn't think about safety on an actual accident. Let's go see the next clip. Here we have an engine. Usually on an engine, we'd need to remove torque converter nuts to get it out. Well, if you look at this one, you'll notice there's still a torque converter on the back of it. That would be because we got multiple rods caught up in the Hand inspection right? holes. So you might ask yourself, how the hell am I going to get it off? That's the same question I asked myself. <laughs> Pop this loose, <laughs> right? Guy. See, we got a torque converter nut right there. That's a nut. We would then spin the engine over, but we can't. So, oh. therefore, I guess we're going to pull the heads. Crank, piston, the rods, and canoe valve, and all that. Because these bastards. Okay. <laughs> the motor blew up, so I mean, I guess that's that's the core of the problem. Yeah. But I'm not sure how you design an engine to be able to turn after it's broken. Yeah. Break the motor. Yeah, right. Just break the motor. Somebody drank too much something <laughs> when they designed that. <laughs> There's no way to get into that motor without breaking it down. Well, that's how they usually go. They mm -hmm. usually are in the starter hole or there's a plate or some kind of an access panel on the bottom, but okay. you've always got to turn the crank. Okay. And if you can't turn the crank, then that's the core issue. But you know what the problem is? Is it probably they're using parts from other cars yeah. and not thinking about that block. Yeah. And then not seeing that you can't even get your hands in there. Not thinking about us. Yeah, manufacturers trying to save uh, money, not us. Yeah. I think you ought to just stop complaining and pull the girdle off. It's not that it's blown up, so who cares? You're going to have the whole thing apart in 10, 15 minutes. So he's just being lazy. I hate doing this. <laughs> I think he's kind of just whining. <laughs> he's whining. Just take a the girdle bit. off and, and call it a day. It's a whining mechanic. He should just break the block. No, but it's the engineers, bro. They suck. They suck. They suck. <laughs> Excellent. You know who the worst engineers are in the no. world? Close up. Ford engineers. Ford's engineers oh, are the worst, apparently. Oh, man. Ford escape. It's an escape. Doing an oil change. The oil filter goes right there, right up in between all of those hoses. You have to fish it out through all of these hoses. Let me put it on and I'll show you exactly where. Ready? You need to between these hoses up here, get it up over there somehow, mm -hmm. rotate it around. <laughs> Then somehow mm. get it right there. It's not, mm. I mean, it's oh, slight no. inconvenience. Is this really a problem? I'd say it's a, it's annoyance. It, the more stuff you jam in there, the worse it's going to get. Mm -hmm. And and the oil filter is going to be where the oil filter is going to be based on the architecture of the motor. What are they supposed to do? Stretch the front of the car out to move the fan away to make it a little easier? Yeah, it'd be nice, but not the end of the world. Also, that motor is transverse and you know yeah. longitudinal in multiple different vehicles. Things are going to be probably... where they're going to be. Yeah, yeah. things are going to be where they're going to be. Like I would tell somebody, be like, "Puppy, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. It's not that hard. Just." You know? I feel like he was making it seem yeah. harder. It's like, bro, oh, maybe he's... if you weren't holding a camera in yeah. the other hand. Yeah. No, you know okay. what? He's trying to charge the customer more. Oh, you're probably That's what it right. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh, oh, I see. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm okay. playing, I'm playing with it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's super <laughs> like hard. Like, yeah, it does. But you know the real problem right there? Since they put it right there, you see all the other hoses? Yeah. They're gonna, with the oil, they'll crack out. And then that causes problems. Right, because those hoses aren't rated for oil. No. Yeah, exactly. He didn't say that was a problem, but. Looking at it, that's a problem. Straight up, it's a whining mechanic, but you should have looked at the other problems. He's whining a little bit. He's, He's just, whining. It's fine. He it's literally fine showed us it's not that bad. Here's me accomplishing the thing that I'm saying yeah. is almost Within two to... seconds. Yeah. Okay, bro. Next clip. Automotive engineers. Oh, here you we know, go. Those people that go to school, and then they go get a job, and they design stuff, and they have absolutely no trade skills whatsoever. So let's make the battery box where you cannot take it out. No matter what, you can't take it out because everything is in the way. You have to pull the radiator hose off in order to get the battery box out. I like to see that guy go design a car from scratch. 
and CAD with today's modern safety features. Just saying. What do you want? I mean, <laughs> you want to Velcro it in, you know, just with no shoelaces. Well, why is he pulling the tray out anyway? Yeah, yeah. You some, pulled the battery already. Some water and some baking soda well, would handle And a that. brush. Yeah. What are you yeah. pulling the whole thing out for? It seems like he would know that if he had some trade skills. Mm, or if he walked out of his house and enjoyed the world for once. <laughs> Now, looking at this from a mechanic's perspective, do you think it would be that big of a headache to get out? You know what? It's because the customer's not going to look at it like you're just changing out that box. He's going to be like, oh, well, you're just changing out that box. No, I got to take off your coolant, refill it. And if that hose on that coolant for the radiator is busted, you got to replace that. So that's another job that had nothing to do with it. So I understand that. Now, just changing the cover went from 100 bucks so now it's like 200 bucks or 300 bucks. Now, what if your radiator's trash and you took it off and that plastic piece broke and now it's like, you're like. And now you're a rip off, right? Yeah. Because you're making. Now you're, you're on fucking Google as a piece of <laughs> you know, man. Would you say this is cursed engineering or just a whiny mechanic boy? Yeah, yeah. He, he, <laughs> he clearly has a beef with engineers that's, in this case, unjustified. It's not gonna be the mechanics gonna be whining. It's gonna be you sitting right there complaining. I see you looking at me being like, oh yeah, it's your fault. Blame the engineer, not me. Fair enough. Let's go to the next clip. One of the easiest and simplest things to do when you have a problem with your vehicle is to check the fuses first, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That is unless you're driving an Audi. Let's figure oh. out where the fuse box is. Oh, okay, it's back here in this corner. First things first, to get this big ass cover out of the way. And it's not uncommon for Audis to have the fuse box. Well, that can't be right. Washer reservoir is right there. What in the, you've got Oh my be. God. <laughs> oh, well that's the PCM. Yep. Electrical control modules do not belong yeah, underneath that's pretty... that. It's even stained blue from all the time oh it's been God. spilled on it. Yep. Oh, yeah. Corrosion and water in the connector. Oh. That's wild. Please let this be the fuse box. It's held in with five or six torque screws. Oh Put a light God. in here so we can see a little bit better. Oh, <laughs> of course, the hood's aluminum. <laughs> the fuse box under here, <laughs> and we got to it. You look at that. It's good. It's a good thing we check <laughs> oh, the simplest thing first. Oh. <laughs> it is a common diagnostic place. It's not ideal to to be down underneath everything else, you know, buried down in there. Mm -hmm. They they are so intended to be a serviceable item. That's just dumb. Though. Every time you dig it, you dig down in there, you're disturbing stuff. Mm -hmm. That is funny because I always tell students like first thing, easiest fuse. That's not. Oh yeah, that's not the easiest. Everybody says that with these cars. Yeah. They're like, well, they, I saw online it just says check the fuses. I'm like, well, you check them. I want to see you check them. <laughs> and they look at me like, damn, what a dick. And I'm like, no, because you're making it seem like it's a. It quick and easy. Five minute job. That guy just went through the whole process and he cut it down. Honestly. <laughs> you engineers are the problem. It is a stupid, stupid place. Next clip. Is that the drive shaft? You can put a cup under there. Well, he's draining the death fluid system, is what it looks like. Death is corrosive as hell and crystallizes yeah. really bad. Yeah. So having it splash all over that stuff, yeah, it's not good. No. <laughs> but. You knew that. He knew that. You knew that. Put a funnel, <laughs> put a cone, put a cup, a bucket, I don't a know. A bucket? <laughs> we'll blame on the mechanic. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Get your cardboard out, bro. Mechanic fail. All right, cool. If you've ever cursed out an engineer working on a car, let us know down in the comments. Even better, if you shot a video of an engineering fail, send it to us at realmechanicstuff.com, and we'll determine if it's you that's the problem or the engineer. I'm gonna say it's you. <laughs> <laughs> this next clip features our friend Doug Demira pointing out a questionable engineering choice on an iconic car. Let's take a look. You open the door oh. and you'll notice not just the door opens, but also a good chunk of the car's roof. The door has a roof attached to it. It makes the car tremendously difficult to get into oh, if you man. park near something because the Poor roof GT, blocks man. your access to the interior. It is one of the all time worst door designs ever. You can even take off a few a strands face. of hair. I met the designer of this car, Camillo Pardo. He told me he fought the engineers hard to make sure the GT kept that heritage door design. And I was thinking to myself, why did you do that? Uh, but that's 
part of the charm of this car. Exactly. The Ford GT, super awesome car. If you owned one, would you care that the door was like this? Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely You're not parking not. this in a crowded Absolutely parking not. lot. <laughs> what the f are you complaining about? I'm gonna go to Target right now with my <laughs> GTO. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing to complain about I can possibly think about. It's a supercar, bro. Honestly, the f are you going to be complaining? It's there because yeah. everything is so penciled out and designed to like the, the average motorist and everything's so compromised to just have that one thing that you put in there because it's cool. Mm -hmm. So why not keep it? It's because it's cool. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Is this cursed engineering or a whiny driver? I'll put it like this. Doug, it's you. 100% whiny. Whiny driver. You're in a Ford GT, park away from everyone else. You'll have room to open the freaking door. Yeah, buy a bigger garage. I think Doug DeMiro is just making fun of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the dude owns it, right? <laughs> he just thinks it's a charming thing, you know? <laughs> Let's go to the next clip. So we know engineers and mechanics don't get along, but I think I just found the first recorded instance of an engineer who's worked on a car before they started designing them. See, if you had to remove the AC condenser, it's normally blocked by your intake and the core support. The lines are held in place by a screw right underneath the funnel, and this can't be removed unless you pull the whole bumper. But some hero somewhere thought they would spend the extra time and money to include this. Maybe engineers and mechanics can get along. Aww. Aww. Wow. A little access hole? Yeah, that's cool. That's that's nice. That's a nice touch. Maybe an homage to the mechanics that we be working on. Just a little, just a little, throwing a little love. If it's a car enthusiast, as an engineer, then you get shit like that. You get a 350Z and you're like, oh shit, I could take shit apart and they thought about you. But it's, it's really rare. Are there any cars that you think seem more like they were designed with mechanics in mind at all? I'm just not that cynical. I mean, I a part of the thing I like about cars is Sort Figuring of discovering the different routes when they design them. I mean, I just kind of like the sort of the quirkiness of them. Okay, so obviously this guy is thanking the engineers for providing him this small little shortcut. We'll call this one blessed engineering. Absolutely. We're blessing blessed. this engineer. You're blessed. blessed. Well, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like the video and leave a comment and do dishes, <laughs> walk your dog, take your vitamin, kiss your mom. Check out realmechanicstuff.com if you want to be a guest mechanic on this show. Well, thank you so much, Sandro, for joining us. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you next time.